Hey guys, this is Fadex and today we're gonna be looking at how to make Doodle Jump in Godot Engine. So first off, I'm gonna set the window size to something like something like a portrait view on mobile because that, that's how the game works. So I'm gonna set it to like something like 500 by 800, uh, I mean 560 by 800. And first off, let's create the world node. So I'm gonna use node2d set its name to world and I'm gonna start by adding the player so the player is gonna be a rigid body 2d because we're gonna use the physics I'm gonna name it player and set the mode here to character because I don't want to enable rotation and that stuff second secondly I'm gonna add a sprite I have the doodle jump sprites here so I'm gonna add the doodler and as you can see, he's really big, so I'm gonna scale him down to like 30%. And then I'm gonna add, so this is gonna be a little different. I'm not gonna add a collision shape, I'm gonna add an area 2D. And to that, I'm gonna add the collision shape 2D, okay? Now I'm gonna set the collision shape 2D to rectangle. And I want the size to be so, uh, somewhere like at his legs, I don't want it. I don't want his whole body to collide, I'm, so I'm gonna do like his legs like this. I don't know, this works, I guess. Uh, and that's it for the player so far, I think. Uh, next up, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna make a scene from the player. So save branch as a scene. Uh, I'm gonna name the folder instances and I'm gonna put the player scene in then I'm gonna save this scene I'm gonna create a folder scenes and add the world scene in it so now I cleaned it up a bit I can play the game I can run the game and we can see that we have a basic player that's falling I think that he's falling too slow so I'm gonna pump up the gravity scale to like seven so he would be like he would made more yeah that works uh next up i'm gonna add a uh, background so i'm gonna add a parallax background node because we want a parallax background and then a parallax layer now this is really important i'm gonna set the mirroring of the layer to our viewport size so I'm gonna say 560 by 800 so that the background will repeat then I will add a texture frame yeah I will add a texture frame and I'm gonna add the background there now you can see that the background is really really big so I'm gonna scale it down once more uh, 2.5 2.5 now I'm gonna say expand and tile that means that the background, background itself will, will repeat, as you can see. And I'm gonna set the scale to something like this. And now we have a repeating background. Now, next up, uh, I wanna add a camera. A camera that will... Uh, so I'm gonna set the cam camera to current, so that it, uh, that it registers it and uses it. And then you have this drag margin, which is like uh, it follows the target, but not like perfectly. So I don't want that. I'm going to turn that off. Now you can see that the camera is there. So I'm going to drag the, uh, the parallax background so that it would be on the camera like this. Now we have a background. I can run the game. Yeah, my player just falls down because I don't have the flowing behavior. But let's let's make the paddle first, like the platform. So I'm gonna add a static body 2D, rename it to platform, uh, add a sprite. Okay, uh, the sprite's gonna be the platform. 
first uh, first off I'm gonna make make it an in uh, scene an instance so it will be a little bit cleaner yeah and we can work on it here so what do we need next we need a collision shape so the so you know the player will collide with it I'm gonna make it a rectangle and I'm gonna make it somewhat like this because we only want the top to collide I don't know maybe a little bit smaller okay like this so we have the basic stuff set up now if I will put this down and now play the game the player will fall through so now I need to do the bouncing now I didn't use the default uh, rigid body physics engine bouncing because the bouncing would then depend on how from what height the player fell on the platform but I want the jump height to be constant so I'm gonna do that right now in a script using a script so I'm gonna create a player script first off I'm gonna create a folder called scripts and add the player script in there we don't need this so first off let's do the bouncing now if you can remember we put the area 2d in there and we're gonna use it for like a collision detector you have a body enter function here so I will make a signal that will call a function in the player script every time somebody enters the area 2d and I'm gonna name the method uh, like collision now we have a collision function here and we need to check if the if it's a platform so I'm gonna go to the platform scene and on the top right in node we have a groups option and I'm gonna add the platform node to a group called paddles now why did I do that now in player script in collision we can do if body dot is in group paddles which will check if the body the area collided with with is in the paddles group so if it is I'm gonna add a force to to my player set linear velocity vector 2 and now we need to do 0 on the x coordinate and I'm gonna make a variable jump speed and I'm gonna set it to like 600 and here I'm gonna add min minus jump speed minus jump speed yeah so now if I collide with the paddle I should bounce off yeah you can see that I bounce off so what's next next I'm gonna make the movement so here in the ready function I'm gonna set fixed process to true which means that we now have access we now have access to the fixed process function which is a function that repeats every frame uh, and it's synced to the physics engine every time you make something something with movement or something that has to do with physics engine always use the fixed process so now for the movement I'm gonna say if input dot oh, or wait, wait I'm gonna make uh, two variables here the first one is left key which is gonna be input dot is action pressed UI left and var right key is gonna be input dot is action pressed UI right which is just gonna hold the key values and now I'm gonna say if if left key I want it to go left so I'm gonna set linear velocity to vector 2 now I'm gonna make a speed here speed which is gonna which the player is gonna move I'm gonna set it to like 300 and now I'm gonna set the vector to minus speed and the y because I am falling so I don't want to affect the y so I'm gonna say get linear velocity dot x uh, I mean the y 
So now, if I press left, it goes, it moves to minus speed and the Y coordinate stays the same. Now I'm gonna just copy this and do the same and do the same for right key. Except I'm gonna say plus speed. Now it should work and it doesn't work. Oh, I know why. Uh, I need to put these two variables in fixed process so it would check if the input is pressed every frame, okay? Now it works, as you can see it works, but if I press right, it never stops. So um, I need to check if not left key, so if left key isn't pressed and right key isn't pressed. Right key isn't pressed. And if that's the case, I'm gonna set linear velocity again, and but now to vector 2, and now instead of the speed, I'm gonna set it to 0, so it would stop. And the y's is get linear velocity dot y, because I don't want to affect the falling. Now, if you play the game, we can see that we can now move! Woo! Now I'm gonna make a quick cosmetic thing. Uh, so that the player would face the direction. So I'm gonna say var sprite, and I'm gonna say that sprite in the ready function. I'm gonna say that sprite equals to get node uh, sprite. So I have this access to the sprite node, and now I'm gonna say uh, sprite dot flip set flip h to true. So if I'm going left, I wanna flip the sprite because the flip sprite is currently facing right. And when I'm going left, I wanna flip it, so true. And when I'm going right, I'm gonna say false. So now the player should face the direction. Okay, we have a pretty nice start for the player here. Now, what we need to do next is if I will add uh, a platform, a second platform and put it like above the player, you can see that it, work, it works really strange. If I would put it even lower, you can see that the player bounces off even though he's going up, which we don't want. And we can resolve that but by in the collision, we can check if the velocity of the player is if, if the y velocity of the player is bigger than zero, so only if he's falling, he's gonna he's gonna collide, he's gonna bounce off, and you can see that works. Okay, that's pretty awesome, right? Isn't it? Next off, I'm gonna create the camera script. So we wanna want, we want the camera to follow the player. So I'm gonna play, create the camera. Great. This is gonna be really easy. Uh, in Doodle Jump, the camera only follows upwards. It never goes back down. So let's do it. I'm gonna set the process to true. This is like this function uh, plays every every frame. So function process. Uh, and now I need to do the follow follow uh, script. I'm gonna get the player path here. I'm gonna say export uh, node path for player. And I'm gonna name this uh, player path and I'm gonna say a variable player. And I'm gonna set the player variable to get node uh, on the player path. Uh, path, yeah. So basically, what I'm doing here is um, uh, I'm gonna set the node path, the player path mm, here. You can see that we have the script vari variables. I'm gonna assign the player path to the player node, and then I'm gonna get the node and set the node to the player variable. So now I can get the position of the player. So if the position if a uh, player dot get get position uh, I mean get pause 
dot y if the y position is smaller than my camera position then only then i'm gonna set my position to vector 2 x0 i don't want to go with i don't want it to go left and right and the y to the player position we can do this a little easier easier so i'm gonna say our player y to this and then i'm gonna just say player y here and then if the player y is smaller than my than the camera position set the position to the player y position really easy and now we can check it out and we can say see that it follows the player only upwards and when we fall down it doesn't follow so that would be the player uh, i mean the camera script next off let's do a really simple generation i don't want i don't want to make anything uh like procedural even though no you can manage that i'm just gonna make quickly do an example of how it would work how it works so i'm gonna create a world script and that's gonna make like 2000 platforms or something i don't know so first off i need to get the platform so i'm gonna say get plat uh, set, uh, set the val variable platform to preload rest instances platform.tscn so here i'm saying get the scene from you know rest instances platform now i have the access to the scene next up in the ready function i'm going to create a for loop which will generate the platform so where y equals zero that's to keep the decree in y and y while y is i don't know smaller than i mean bigger than uh what like 3000 i can make a new new platform variable which i'm gonna set to platform instance so now i'm instantiating the platform scene so ma basically making a new node out of it then i'm gonna set the position of the platform to to zero because the world is centered uh, i mean vector to zero and then the y i'm using to loop and then simply add the new platform to the scene so now if i delete this platform now oh one more thing <laughs> This would be an infinite loop. I need to decrease the y by by a random range. So I'm gonna say random range between like minus uh, between like zero and I don't know two hundred and ten something like that. And one more thing we need to do is to randomize to say randomize here so we would get a random seat each time now this isn't really what i oh i i must say i must say minus three minus three thousand so it would go up now we can see that we have the platforms generating Ooh, but they're on the same x coordinate Oh, wow, look at this. Uh, they are, I'm gonna say like 10 here, minimum. Uh, now I need to randomize the x, co x coordinate too. So I'm gonna say var dimensions, and I'm gonna set the dimensions, dimensions to get viewport. So that gets the camera viewport dot get rect. That's get this, the rectangle dot size now i have the viewport and i'm gonna set the x position here to minus dimensions dot x well i only need the x so i'm gonna say dot x here and i'm gonna say minus 
and I'm gonna say this set this to width and this to width what the hell okay and now I'm gonna say this to minus minus width divided by two because I only want I don't want the whole viewport to the left I want only half of the viewport because the other half would be out of the viewport and then oh I forgot to <laughs> brand range brand range minus width and width so now we should get a random <laughs> what oh oh because I'm 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 a total idiot this should be to divide it by two obviously so now I can do 2 and 10 because all the platforms were out of the screen as you could see so <laughs> I said it and then I did it wrong okay now it works perfect so we kind of have the game now now the oh it's too high I need to go here now one more thing I'm gonna do is um, you you know that in in Doodle Jump when you go out of the, the screen it wraps you back to the other side so I'm gonna quickly do that now I'm gonna add a new node to the player it's called the visibility notifier Vis visibility notifier and this node has a signal signal exit screen as you can see so I'm gonna say exit screen I'm gonna call the function on the player script and I'm gonna call it exit screen and now we have an exit screen here now what I need to do is uh, say if my x if the player's x get pause the x is greater than the camera oh I need to I need to get the camera so I'm gonna say I'm gonna again export the variable export node path of our camera path and I'm gonna do the same thing so I'm gonna say var camera here so I'm now gonna assign the camera path to the camera 2d so now I get the camera and now I'm gonna say camera equals get node on the camera path okay so now I have the camera and now I can deal with its position so I'm gonna say if the if my position is greater than the camera position so camera dot get box dot y I mean x uh, this is a function <laughs> I'm gonna say <laughs> uh, I'm, I need it to wrap, wrap back so I'm gonna say set boss to vector 2 now I'm, I need it to set set it to the minus width divided by 2 so I'm gonna do the width variable here again and I need to set it to uh, get viewport dot get rect dot size dot x okay now I have the width so I need to do minus width divided by 2 and I don't want to change the y position so I'm gonna say get boss dot y here okay so now it should wrap back and now I'm gonna do the same for the for the left side so if the camera is smaller than or if the position is smaller than the camera position I'm gonna say wrap to plus width now if I test this you can see that it won't work and there's a reason for that you can see that I'm I'm stuck because I'm out of the screen it teleports me here now I'm, I'm out of the screen here so it teleports me back here the way we can solve this is check for the velocity so if it's greater if it's on the right if it's out of the screen on the right I'm gonna say and if get linear velocity dot x is greater than zero so if I'm going right and same for the left side if I'm going left so if it's less than zero now if I will try it out 
you can see that the teleporting works. I fell down. I'm gonna try it again. So fun. Uh, now, if I mm, go out of the screen, I, you can see that it will teleport me. And on this other side, too. Now, you can see that it will teleport you, like, into the screen, which looks a little bad. So, I'm gonna say, like, minus... 32 and here plus 32 so I would get even a little bit past the screen So now yeah, this looks really good Wow, okay, this is great And one last thing I'm gonna do is uh, If I will fall down, I'm gonna die And I need the I need the screen height here so I'm gonna say okay I'm gonna say height and then I'm gonna say height equals to get viewport get wrecked this is kind of bad but whatever but why and now I'm gonna say even before I'm gonna say if get pos the y is greater than camera get pause y plus the height divided by 2 so now I'm saying if I'm out of the viewport on the bottom I'm gonna say I'm gonna print loose okay let's try it out if I lose if I fall down lose I lost okay so what I'm gonna do is uh, create a world path here I'm gonna say I'm gonna set the path to the world scene so rest scenes world.tscn and now I'm gonna I'm gonna say if I fall out of the screen I'm gonna get tree dot change scene to the world path so now if I fall out of the screen it should restart the game yeah. Uh, okay, one more. I remembered one more thing. For if you would make the world infinite and procedural, one really good performance uh, thing is uh, I'm gonna create a platform script here called platform.gd. Okay, great. I'm gonna add one more node called visibility notifier again, which I'm gonna connect to on exit screen to the platform to exit screen function. So whenever the platform exits the screen, I'm gonna say Q3, which is gonna destroy the node out of, it's gonna delete the node out of, out of the world. So now you can't really notice it, but when the platforms exit the screen, they delete themselves. That's a really good performance thing. So that's all I think I wanted to talk about today. Now, I'm gonna challenge you to make the world procedurally generated so it would be infinite because as you can see the amount of the platforms is fixed and I think you can manage that. So, thanks for watching, I hope I was clear this is my first tutorial so I'm kind of, I hope it was somehow good for something for someone. Okay, so see ya next time, maybe write in the comments what game would you like to see next time and see ya!